Hey everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Seppi and today's video I'm going to talk to you guys about how to get into medical school. I get this question all the time in my DMs and also in comments. Those people want to know more about how to become a doctor and the journey here in the UK. I'm going to talk to you guys about how to apply to medical school undergraduate. So if you guys are interested, then please keep watching. I can also do a whole series on this if you're interested. So if this video hits a thousand likes, then I can can continue because there's so much more than just how to get in we can talk about interview prep we can talk about the entrance exams in more detail so if you guys want more of these videos then please hit the like button before I get into the video deeply I just want to take a moment to talk about what's happening in Iran if you guys aren't aware I'd really encourage you to google Iran and a lot of news articles will come up particularly about a 22 year old young lady called Masa Amini who was tragically brutally killed um because of not wearing her headscarf properly and it's not only affected all of us iranians but it's it's reached people globally women and people all around the world are coming together to show their support so i would encourage you guys to look into what's been going on in iran i'd be really grateful and for my iranian followers who are following I think it'd be really appreciated if you guys could also share the support on your social medias. If you're private, maybe come off of private and share it that way. It would reach more people. Let's get started in the video. So first thing we're going to talk about is subjects to study in secondary school or high school. Um, so you need to do at least English, maths and science. Um, as part of your GCSEs in the UK. Um, for science i would encourage taking triple science over double science although there are some people who do double science and um still don't have any problems with their application i just think it makes you look more well-rounded from the scientific aspect if you do triple science when it comes to grades i would say most unis are looking for someone who is achieving an a or an a star in the majority of their subjects so you want to do about nine subjects and you want to achieve something like a seven in today's grading system or in the old grading system um, an a or above so a seven to a nine is the ideal grades that you need i think to get in particularly in maths english and sciences i think that's really important there are some universities that don't really look at your gcse grades and there are some universities that really do in that case, I would re recommend looking at each university individually on the UKCAT website. So if you go on UKCAT and you type in medicine, the code is A100 and you can see um, every single university that offers med medicine as a subject and what their requirements are. They do really downplay it. That's why I'm being more honest with you guys in regards to how many subjects they want and the real kind of grades that they want. But most of them who do care about GCSEs will mention it and the ones who don't will ma mainly mention A-levels. Now for A-levels, most universities want you to do at least biology and chemistry. Um, some people want you to do chemistry and maths. Some people want you to do biology, chemistry and maths. Um, so again, look at each university specifically and see um, what they recommend. I think biology, chemistry and maths is probably the safest trio or at least biology and chemistry is the safest duo and then the third subject um, could be anything else except critical thinking or general studies. Um, the grades that they want usually range between AAA to A star AA. Some offers I've even seen are A star AB. But I do think the offer varies um, depending on when they meet you in interview, what kind of school you went to. I think if you went to a top private school or grammar school, um, I think they will probably give you a higher offer than if you went to a comprehensive state school because I think they presume that you might have more opportunity um, to get higher grades even though they don't say that I think that this is the reality of it in my opinion um, if you guys don't agree and you've had other experiences write it down in the comments for everyone who is applying so that they can have more of an insight into more than just one person's experience moving on to the kind of other stuff outside of the grades that they expect from you most medical schools need you to take an entrance test in order to apply to them. So not only do you need to get good grades, but you also need to get a good grade in the entrance test. 
There are two main entrance tests. The first one is the UCAT, which is an aptitude test. Um, it's made up of four different sections and the SJT, which is situational judgment thinking. Um, you can look at the UCAT website to see kind of a background of what this test looks like um, and what subjects they have in it. And I can do a detailed video if you prefer um, talking about UCAT and how to succeed in that. There is also the BMAT. This one is more scientific based and um, has more of a link to your curriculum. It's not really aptitude. Um, fewer universities use this. Um, I know that op Oxford and Cambridge use this as well as Brighton and Sussex. The BMAT website will usually write um, what universities use this for medical school as well as on the UCAS website again each medical school will write what, what entrance test they want you to take. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Now when it comes to choosing your medical school to apply to I think it's important to take into account all these things we just spoke about so your grades in GCSEs, your grades in A level, um, which aptitude test you think you would do better in. Lastly but most importantly your personal preference of where you'd want to go to. So look at these thoroughly, there are a lot of medical schools in addition to making the right choices, it's important to know that with medicine, it's not like other um, subjects, you can only pick four medical schools to apply to. Other um, subjects you are allowed to apply up to five universities. So you can apply it to four medical schools and then you can apply for another subject, but not medicine. And it can be either at one of the universities that you've already chosen or a completely different one. And the subject can be anything you want it to be. But remember that they will read that your personal statement is tailored toward medicine. So if you pick economics, they might completely reject you because they're like, this person doesn't even want to read economics. Why are they applying um, to economics? Uh, so bear that in mind. A lot of people use this fifth option to apply to something that is in the scientific field um, so that if they don't get into medicine they can study something else for three to four years and um, then apply as a postgraduate to medicine. So a lot of people pick something like biomedical science, biomedical engineering, pharmacology, pharmacy, um, healthcare science. So there's a lot of options. Look into them and um, Kind of decide for yourself if that's even something that you would consider doing. I know a lot of people wouldn't even consider doing three years of biomed and then going on to do med um, because they think that that's too long. So if you don't think you would even take that option, maybe just remove it so that if you get the offer and you don't get medical school offers, you're not sat there between a rock and a hard place. Now let's move on to your personal statement. Your personal statement is the bit that's going to have all of the important information about you which shows that you are dedicated to becoming a doctor. As a doctor myself, I think it's important to relate to you guys that medicine is not only a difficult subject to read at university, but being a doctor is a very rewarding but very difficult job and not everyone is built for the hours, the stress of it and responsibility that you hold um, with the knowledge that you have. You can literally save lives and that is a lot of responsibility for a person to have and so they want to make sure that you are aware of this because Medicine is so expensive to read as well that what you pay towards your tuition fees doesn't really cover your education at all and a lot of it is subsidised by the government because you will then be going into the NHS workforce um, so it kind of balances out for them and it is worth it for them to educate you and they don't want to in their eyes waste their money on someone who won't be able to work in the NHS as a doctor and who will uh, drop out because they're not dedicated to the specialty. So, your personal statement has to have some important factors in there. The first thing is work experience. I get so many messages about people asking me how they can get work experience because it's so difficult. The reason why it's difficult is because we have patient confidentiality um, as clinicians and so bringing in someone who is a non-clinician who isn't bound to any confidentiality agreements is difficult for some hospitals and GP practices to arrange. Really I think it just involves getting an NDA signed um, by the uh, student and that should be completely fine. The thing that I would recommend you doing is going to your local hospital or calling them up and seeing what volunteer services they have and what shadowing um, opportunities that they have because they usually have both. 
it was more difficult during covid but now that um it's kind of settled down a bit more um there should be a lot more opportunities for you guys to get involved i've had people message me and say can they work in um my clinic as work experience and shadowing and the honest truth is i don't think that that would be beneficial for your application because i have an aesthetics clinic that is private and separate from the nhs and is very very niche and i feel like if you want to um show in your personal statement that you understand what reading medicine involves and um working in the nhs specifically involves then you probably would fare better doing a hospital shadowing or a gp practice shadowing than somewhere private in a private clinic somewhere if you can't get any of these i would think the next best option would be to look at work experiences abroad if you can't if you've tried loads of places in the uk and you can't get it try abroad i know that this is difficult and expensive and might not be an option for many of you um but i think that it again shows that you have insight into at least a healthcare system there is actually a lot of um programs uh if you look online for people who are interested in reading medicine to um volunteer in hospitals in third world countries so look into that i know it's expensive and um it's not feasible by a lot of people but it's an option that is there that i want to inform you guys about in this video the next thing that is important is volunteering and or teaching so in terms of volunteering uh i think that it's important to be a part of some sort of committee i remember i did charity committee in my school i was also um head of the natural sciences committee so you want to show kind of commitment to a specialty and i would also do volunteering outside of school locally there was a school um for people with learning difficulties and i would go there once a fortnight and volunteer and help with teaching there um i had really quite a simple role i didn't have to do much i didn't have a lot of responsibility but it was so insightful and even to this day i feel like i did learn from it and a lot of people do stuff like working in a residential home or a care home volunteering there and they use that work experience and i think that again that is so helpful because a lot of our um, patients who come in to um, the hospital are geriatric patients so it is a good volunteering experience to have extracurricular activities also so i remember there's the stuff that you can do like after school clubs i think i was like editor-in-chief of my school science magazine we literally started it that year um my school's really cool and supportive with that kind of stuff but i know that not everyone's schools have funds to even do something like that so try and be innovative you can do extracurricular activities such as looking joining your local um sports club or um you know for example if you play tennis or if you swim you can join a local club there your extracurricular activity doesn't necessarily have to be linked to science or um to medicine and in particular but just to show that you're kind of doing stuff outside of school um but engaging and educating and developing yourself as a person is what they really care about and make sure in your personal statement you have something in there that is for yourself so something that you do that you're passionate about that has nothing to do with all this because they at the end of the day want people who are well-rounded if all you've done up until that point of applying to med school is focus on applying to med school and everything is scientific and tailored towards medicine in this application then they think that you're probably less well-rounded and that you will burn out at some point and that's why they want to see that you are more of a well-rounded person also understands that they need to give themselves a break and something that they do that they're passionate about for them so you could have something like i go to the theater like every a few weeks or i enjoy reading books the latest one that i read was blah -de blah -de blah anything that you think is something that you do in order to relax it could be working out it could be anything but make sure you have something in there that is about you and what you do for yourself um, in order to rest relax and recuperate i think i've covered the majority of the points we get we're going to get on to the next bit now which is imagine you've sent off your application now so you've done your personal statement you have the grades you've done the entrance test and you've sent off your application and you come back with an interview interviews can come in two formats for medicine and yes there is always an interview i believe edinburgh never used to have interviews but i'm not sure if that is still the case um but 
other than that every other medical school has interviews so the format is either a multiple mini interview format or a traditional panel format so traditional panel is kind of as it says on the tin there is three to five people sitting down in front of you and they will ask you questions may maybe related to your personal statement maybe the typical med school questions that everyone gets Asked. There is a top 100, which I can make a separate whole video about medical school interviews if you're interested. Um, and they will ask you, maybe they'll put an article in front of you and they will ask you about this article, which could be um, related to medical ethics or anything really. But there is usually like a niche they ask you about, which you could prepare for. The other type of interview is the MMI, multiple mini interviews, and that is six to eight stations, depending on the university, sometimes it could be even less, um, and they're usually about five to ten minutes long, and they want to see kind of how you think. Stations will be based on um, seeing what your clinical prioritization is like, so for example, um, they'll tell you that you need to go to work and there are three routes that you can get to work The first one is free, but you will get to work five minutes late The second one is ten pounds, but you'll get to work 45 minutes early And the third one is that you just call in and you don't go into work that day because there's a strike For example, um, they might make it sound a, a little bit more difficult and you have to think about it but um in general something like that and they want to see that basically you prioritize getting to work on time even if it means that you have to spend a tenner they want to see that you are dedicated and that you understand that sometimes it, it comes back to the context of as a doctor there are a lot of times that you need to sacrifice something of yourself because of your job so for example if you finish at 5 p.m as a doctor the majority of the time you don't actually finish at 5 p.m by the time you hand over if there's a sick patient if there's a cardiac arrest you won't leave at five o'clock on the dot there are times that you do oftentimes but in in the reality of it you don't and they want to make sure that you're not the kind of person who as soon as the clock strikes five you're out the door and it's unsafe because believe it or not there are some people who are like that and this is how they try and sieve them out in the interview there's loads of kind of books and stuff to um prepare for interviews i don't know if i necessarily believe in books um i believe in thorough preparation and like i said i can make a whole separate video on medical school interviews then we get to the last bit which is you get an offer so you've been to your interviews and you get offers um based on whatever offer you get you then have to put your head down study and make sure that you hit those grades that they want you um to get in order to get in now we get to the point where if you don't have an offer if you don't have an offer to medical school you can potentially still go to medical school in the uk that year uh, and there are ways other than just clearing i can talk to you guys about this in detail in a separate video if you want to see that please hit the like button and leave me a comment down below and i can continue this series i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more kind of medical school related content then let me know in the comments as well as just the like button because um i know that i usually film vlogs and kind of my life as a doctor but sometimes i know that people often i know people reach out to me and want to know how to become a doctor in the first place so if this is something that interests you then please voice that to me and i will happily cater that to you and film more med school content for you don't forget to check out my socials they're always linked in the description my instagram is persian bunny and my tiktok is persian underscore bunny i love you all so much and i'll see you next time bye